I have zero doubt that if the United States does not take, uh, does not seek great innovations in space, it will be second in space. Okay. With as sure as nightfall is day. There's no country more innovative and inventive than the United States. So it's just important to use that attribute. That's, that's the ace card. Okay. I mean, I do think it's, it's absolutely fundamental to achieve full reusability in access to space. This is, this is the, the holy grail of space. Um, at the point at which you have full reusability for orbital rockets, then you have uh, a, a profound advantage over a, anyone else. It's profound. Or, or if, you're, if, you're, if you're at multi-use planes that can be flown over and over again, like normal, um, and all your adversaries had single-use planes, that would be no contest. It's the same thing in space. Okay. Yeah, this is extremely fundamental. So just like an aircraft, you, you, the, the, the rocket must be rapidly and completely reusable, and then you need lots of them. The massive thing that can be done is to make sure your incentive structure is such that uh, innovation is rewarded and lack of innovation is punished. So you've got to be a carrot and a stick. So uh, if somebody is innovating um, and doing, ma making good, good progress, then they should be promoted sooner. Um, and if somebody is completely failing to innovate, um, not, not every role requires innovation, but uh, if they're in a role where innovation is, should be happening and it's not happening, then they should either not be promoted or exited. And let me tell you, you'll get, promote, you'll get, you'll, you'll, you'll get innovation real fast. When trying different things, you, you, you've got to have some acceptance of failure, uh, as you were alluding to earlier. Failure must be an option. If failure is not an option, it's going to result in extremely conservative choices, and you, you, may, not, you may get something even worse than lack of innovation. Things may go backwards. Well, what I mean by the machine that builds the machine is that the the, the production, the, designing the production system of a new product is, I think, at least an order of magnitude or two orders of magnitude harder than designing the initial prototype. Yeah. For sure, we were doing push in the beginning because people said there was no one telling us that they wanted an electric car. So it was not, it was not out of like, you know, it was like lots of people coming up to me saying, hey, I really want an electric car. I heard that zero times. Um, <laughs> so people were like, it's like, man, we're going to make an electric car and show that these things can be good, um, and then people will want them. Um, you know, it's like, I think it was like Henry Ford said, uh, like the, you know, if you, when we talk about the Model T, it's like if you ask the public what they wanted, they'd say a, fa a faster horse. It's, it's like w w when, when it's a radically new product, people don't know that they want it because it's just not in their, in their, in their scope the most transformative, most fundamentally transformative will be AI. I mean, it's essentially, in information theory and physical theory, um, if you want to understand the nature of the universe, um, and have, these have an, a very good predictive power, physics and computer science. Okay. And I, and I think that you, you could actually do point to point on Earth uh, with, uh, you know, to go long distances um, and be much better than aircraft. Um, because, I mean, basically, just think of like, ICBM um, minus the nuke, add land, you know? So, so it's just sort of in the option package, just, you know, uncheck nuke and then add landing system. <laughs> Check. <laughs> and, and that's definitely going to get you wherever you want to go the, the fastest. I think uh, things, are, things are, very, are definitely going to go into kind of autonomous, or, or, lo locally autonomous do, uh, drone warfare. Is where it's at, where the future will be. Now, I'm, I'm just saying, it's not. I want the future to be this. It's just this is what the future will be. Okay. Is autonomous drone warfare. Yeah. Well, actually, at, at Tesla, we just uh, open sourced our patents uh, some years ago, so anyone can use our patents. Um, so we really have not been tried to protect intellectual property uh, in that sense. Uh, we've we've tried to actually smooth the path. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the overarching goal of Tesla is to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. And so if we um, created a patent portfolio that discouraged other companies from making electric cars, that would be inconsistent with our mission. 
So we open sourced all the patents okay. uh, in order to help the other, anyone else who wants to make an electric car. So I guess that's the opposite of protecting the IP. Now, now the, the real way I think you, you actually achieve intellectual property protection is by innovating fast enough. If your rate of innovation is high, then you don't need to worry about protecting the IP um, because other companies will be copying something that you did years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. You know. Just make sure your, your rate of innovation is fast. Um, speed is really, speed of innovation is, is, what, is what matters. Uh, the thing that will be, that will feel pretty strange is that the Chinese economy is going to be probably at least twice as big as the U.S. economy. Maybe three times, um, but at least twice. Um, uh, so th and that assumes a, a GDP per capita still less than the U.S. Uh, but uh, since they have about four or five times the population, uh, then it would only require getting to a GDP per capita of half the United States for their economy to be twice the size of ours. Um, and as I'm sure people in this room know, the foundation of war is economics. So therefore, in order for the US to be competitive on a military level, the innovation has to overcome a gigantic gap in economic output. So in the absence of radical innovation, the U.S. will be militarily uh, second. Okay. I th we we got to make Starfleet happen. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. so, so we want like, our real big spaceships that can go far places. So, like just try to make Starfleet happen as soon as humanly possible, and definitely while we're, while we're still alive. Yeah, so, I'm not sure about wolf drive, but we can, other stuff I think can be done. Gotcha. Not, wolf drive and teleportation, probably not, but big spaceships that can go far places, definitely that can be done.